Hey what's up you guys, it's Spartan, and today I am going to be starting off as a peasant with absolutely no skills, no weapons, and no gold, and I'm not going to be fighting anyone, and I'm going to be able to beat the game within 6 hours. But I am going to be showing you guys 4 glitch weapons, all worth the max amount of gold of 180,000, that you can make 4 of each single day. I'm going to be showing you the best weapons from each type, I'm going to be showing you guys a trade system, exploit, that basically gets you like, I'd say about 20,000, you can basically take all the gold from party leaders and like 20,000 at a time and all their stuff. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to beat this game without fighting a single person. So the first person we come across is going to be um, Sirigo's party. So you're basically going to go to the Empire and the first party you see, you're going to do basically... I'll just introduce myself and then you're basically going to declare war on them and then you're gonna back out and then you're gonna go back into the fight and you are going to um, say there's something I'd like to discuss with you our realm should make peace and you know what are you doing step bro and his thousand dollars and nothing no party no faction no no soldiers just literally a naked peasant basically with some Roman armor and you're basically just going to take oh my god um well apparently apparently i can take all of his money we're gonna take all of his money and we're gonna take uh we'll take about you know just a good solid nine horses so we're gonna take all of his money we're gonna take his best of horses and we're gonna Settle on an agreement and making peace. You know, they're pretty scared of um, Stepro over here, I guess. So there we go. And then I must leave now. We have all of his money. You know what? That's not good enough, Sergo. Sorry, man. What are you doing, Stepro? Oh, I'm taking all your money, boy. <laughs> so we're going to declare war on them again. And then we're going to back out. Make sure, make sure you do not attack him. And make sure he does not engage in the fight. If he fights you right now, you're going to lose. And you can't um, negotiate peace. So, and then we're going to, I'd like to discuss something with you. Our realm should make peace. And he's got no money, so I'm going to take all of his items. I'm going to take everything he has. And, bam. Now we went from $1,000 to $16,000. You know what? That is good enough for now. And um, you basically can do that over and over and over. Until you have a good solid $100,000. But, that's not the fastest way possible. I personally like to get into the forging system so i'm going to use that money i found or i'll just say found we acquired it through natural means we'll say um and i'm going to basically just get hardwood and those horses are going to help for carry weight too because usually you'd be stuck so <laughs> step bro would be stuck um man they only had two iron ore well, basically, you're going to um, get iron and hardwood, and I'm going to have to go to the next settlement, too. Maybe I'll find someone on the way. I'll save it real quick. All right, so after you have kind of, like, just gone to war and made peace treaties and taken all the money that you can for as long as you want to, basically, the next step will basically be to trade and gather iron and wood and then go into the smithery. And so you're going to have a choice of making tons of different weapons. They're all going to be worth like, you know, anywhere between like 100 gold and 200 gold. It's not going to be profitable. But the two-handed sword. You basically want to go to the two-handed sword and make sure it's just using um, wrought iron. And you're going to make everything as long as possible. Like that. And this should be worth about, I'd say, a thousand to two thousand dollars, but it will unlock you pieces faster than everything else, and it will level you up as fast as possible. Like so, I can do it four times, and I should. I'm hoping to unlock something that I, I'm hoping to unlock either javelins or throwing axes or two-handed axes so if you do not unlock any of those if you don't unlock two-handed pole arms two-handed axe like a head a javelins or throwing axes just keep repeating the process of making two-handed weapons 
and you can also smelt it down if you don't want the money from it so you can get the parts back and as you can see these are worth about two thousand dollars each so it's definitely worth the money it's definitely not bad for making money but there's better and i'll show you that all right so here are the weapons that basically are the cheapest possible that give you unlimited amount of money the max money possible and um, I'll link the video I have on this kind of more in detailed in depth kind of style up above if you have javelins unlocked which you should unlock it pretty soon the best is going to be the harpoon head make that maximum length and use the longest javelin shaft you have make that maximum length and you'll see it does 125 piercing damage and only cost me a single iron and single hardwood which is extremely cheap I'll just uh, I'll put down test javelin so you guys can see it I've made this probably a solid 10 times already and um, I'll show you guys that later all right so as you guys can see that single iron and hardwood earns you 180,000 gold which is the max gold you can possibly make from any item in this game so one iron which costs about ten dollars twenty dollars something like that in the game and one hardwood which is also about ten dollars earns you hundred eighty thousand dollars in this game and as you can see um, I was testing it out earlier to see which one maxed it out I've made tons of these you can make like four of these a day rest for a couple seconds and make four more and keep repeating that over and over and over until you have unlimited money because as you can see right here I've made a solid about I'd say about six thousand dollars or um, sorry um, six million dollars from javelins so right here in just a span of a couple days in the game I've made six million dollars from just simple wood javelins with harpoons on the top of them which is insane so five days I'd say equals six million dollars in this game which is insane so you guys definitely need to try that out and there's a couple other weapons that are just like this just as good as the javelin that I have discovered from using the smithery for a while all right so the next one would be the two-handed pole arm that's extremely cheap for how um, how much money you get basically but this one's gonna take steel so it might take you guys a little longer to get it and steel's a little harder to come by so you're going to basically make you're gonna basically get either the razor head the War Razor, um, the Navelin, the Volge, the Sword Staff, or I believe the Long Glaive. Long Glaive also works really nicely. But for this, I'm going to use the Razor Head just because that's what I unlocked. And it takes a long time to unlock these, and it's very randomized. But you're basically going to go for anything that has as much cut damage as possible. So like the War Scythe, or the Sickle Blade, or something that focuses on cutting. And I'm going to make this as small as possible. I'm going to go to, I'm going to say, um, around 200 reach is what you're going to want. And you're going to make this as small as possible. So you're aiming to make that swing speed as fast as possible and um, your weapon reach also lower. So I'm going to forge this and I'll name it like test pole arm 2 because the first one didn't work out. And I got this legendary one too, so it's gonna be even it's gonna worth even more. And it should unlock you a lot of parts also. You can tell if you max out the gold just because you unlocked a lot of parts. And this is a good way of leveling up your smithing as fast as possible as well. Alright, here it is. Test pole arm two, the one I just made. And that is worth the max gold, 180,000 for I think two steel and um, wood basically. That's all you that's all it does. So I'll look at this, and there it is, 180,000 gold for two steel, which is the next best weapon in the game. And it's huge. You can use this yourself too and reach over your um, your guys and stay safe, or you can use it on horseback and do like 500 damage a hit from flying by. It's really nice. All right, so the next item or weapon that you can make that's extremely cheap and gets you a lot of money would be the would be the pike with as small of a blade as possible you're gonna also use something that's focused more on cut rather than piercing so you got the long glaive head 
You got the Manavalin and Sword Staff. And let's see. And also you can use the Glaive for this. So you can make that as short as possible, which actually increases your damage and just helps everything but reach, which you're not going to need that much reach anyways. And you're going to go to the shaft and make it as small as possible, increases your damage. This should be the highest damage weapon in this entire game. So this is really fun to use, like, um, personally, if you want to reach over people or just keep everything at a distance. And it's really fun to give your companions this pike, because they will never die with this. They will stay behind your guys and stay with safe distance away from them. Which is really nice all right so here they are the crafted pikes so we'll take a look at these so that was I believe it was two steel for 180,000 to gold also and it's the max damage weapon in this entire game which is really really nice to use it's really fun to use also so here you go you can't even see it because it's so huge unless I do that yeah look at that look at my dude do you imagine like an entire army of companions with giant glaives like that that would be awesome to fight with. Alright, so next up would be the two-handed sword. So, all the different types. So, the two-handed sword has an option that gets 180,000 gold. As well as the two-handed polearm, the javelin, the two-handed axe, I believe, and the pike. And that is the only ones that get maxed out gold. So, for the two-handed sword, is one of the hardest options for that. But it does give you the absolute best weapon in the game, in my opinion. So you're going to need something with the highest cut damage possible, which I usually really, really recommend a pointed falchion blade, just with the ridiculous amount of damage it does. But I have the two-handed blade unlocked at the moment, so I'm going to use that. And I believe you're going to make the blade as long as possible. You're going to go to, I think it is, you're going to go to the southern guard, and you're going to make that smaller. And then you're going to go to a two-handed grip if you can find one. Any two-handed grip works. So it'll just give you the option of two-handed sword instead of like two-handed and one-handed. You do not want that. If you do a one-handed sword and a two-handed sword option, the game will calculate the one-handed sword for how much it's worth. Which will make this sword worth like literally probably 5,000 gold or something like that. It just destroys the value of the sword. So I'm going to use the long wire grip. I'm going to shorten that as much as possible, and I'm going to use this big ball. So anything that increases damage as much as possible, and I'm going to decrease that size. And forge. Test two-handed sword. You got that nice bonus too. And believe this should be worth... Let's see. Yep, this is max gold right here. But that is not, like, I'm pretty sure this is, like, the most expensive metal and a lot of it. So this is the most expensive variety of all of them, but is the best two-handed sword in the game. And it's worth the max amount of gold. So if you want, you know, just to make a few of these with your companions, and if you have too many, you can sell them for the max gold. But it's definitely a really, really nice sword. And we'll look at it here. There it is. Giant ball at the end of it. Alright, so out of every single, so I've covered every single max gold weapon in this game, and I'll just kind of real quickly go over the best um, of everything else. So the best two-handed mace would be small as possible, small as possible. This gets you the most value. I believe it's about um, 120,000 gold. Then throwing knives, you're going to not even use them because they're trash. <laughs> and then you're going to use some Fr Francisca's head. You can use the longest shaft possible and make it as long as possible. So that gets the highest value out of anything. And let's see. It's only 79 damage before. It, it, they updated the game where they decreased the damage of all throwing weapons. So this would have been about 130 before. Two hidden pole arms. We don't know over that. Javelin. And then the best mace in the game would be the cataphracts mace head. Small as possible. You get the longest uh, steel mace handle and make that as small as possible. And then you forge this and it should be about 120,000 gold also. And it's really, really nice because it two shots anyone and it's extremely fast. Even heavily armored units. So I'll forge that and look at that real quick. Let's 
All right, then the best one-handed sword would be, I believe, this one, as big as possible. And then you get the longest shaft as possible and make that as long as possible, and then you would create that. That would be worth about 60,000 gold. Axes just aren't really that good. And then for your sword, you're going to go for a curved blade, preferably one with the highest cut damage possible because you're going to ignore that pierce damage. The game doesn't calculate pierce damage for how much money it, it's worth. Looks like, looks like out of all of these, uh, you want length and damage. So I'm going to say the long scimitar blade would be the worth the most. Let's see, 4.2. Yeah, so it's got 4.3 cut damage. You're going to make that as big as possible. All right, so you're going to use a the longest grip possible. You're going to shorten that down as much as possible. And you're going to use a giant ball for um, kind of like the end of the sword. A pommel. Highest damage possible, and you lower that. Then you would forge it. That should get the most amount of money. I believe the most expensive sword would be about 120000 also. So this would be about $120,000. Two-handed axe. You'd go for the highest cut damage possible, increase that highest, um, longest range basically, and then shorten it as much as possible, and that should get you about 150,000. Pike, and then dagger. No one cares about the dagger. Alright, so after testing the forging system and all its different mechanics for multiple, multiple days, I'd say, in game, um, these are the best weapons in the game for money wise and selling wise. So, my crafted two handed swords I showed you guys. And then the crafted one-handed axes don't get very much value. The crafted two-handed axe you can get around 120,000 at best. And then the best maces you can use are about 15, 100 or yeah, 15,000 gold, which is not too bad. That's almost maximum. So you just make that as short as possible and as little damage as possible using the biggest mace possible. If that makes sense. Then crafted two-handed mace, you're going to want to make that everything as small as possible with the highest damage. And you get about 7,000 out of it. And then all of these different ones. Look at just all of these different pole arms and pikes I made. I mean, it took a lot of uh, testing to figure out which one would be the best. So you got the crafted two-handed pole arms right here. Basically, you just get the longest, highest damage weapon possible. And then you shorten the shaft and the blade to make it as worth as much as possible and as fast as possible. Because so you gotta consider the damage is affected by the swing rate also, like the swing speed. So you need that swing speed higher. So you got the crafted pike, you got the crafted two, um, two handed pole arm that's worth max. And... Throwing axes, you'll also, just after the update, um, before the update you can get max gold with it, but now like the best axe you can make, throwing axe you can make is about 5,000 gold best knife would be literally only $330 and then the nice javelins which I made dozens and dozens of them so it's just one iron and one wood to make the best javelin in the game and worth it $180,000 uh, one thing I wanted to point out also is you guys are gonna be struggling with selling all this stuff you know you got all this money all this very extremely valuable swords and weapons and it's taking up room it's taking up weight stuff like that and you're not going to be able, you know, like these settlements only have 26,000 gold, 100,000 max. So you're going to be wasting a lot of your money here. You know, you're going to sell a couple of these weapons and bam, they don't have any more money to give you. You know, traders out of money. So what do you do? The first thing you want to do is basically to find the kingdom leaders and trade with them, especially if they're in a war party. So this war party over here of Landia, it's going to be the perfect person to trade with right now. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. Alright, so I found another guy willing to trade his city for me. So I'm going to take all of his gold, all of his horses, and his city. And I'm going to give him basically tons of javelins. And tons of my two-handed weapons I made. Which, I mean, it costs a lot, I I'm going to be honest. But it's honestly, it's worth it. I would highly recommend just buying one city with this strategy and just taking all their money. So you take all their money with your javelins you make, because, you know, if I if I take away the city, if I, you know, put the city back, 
I, it's already it's already worth it. Like one javelin equals 180,000 gold. So you could just take their gold. But if you want your first settlement, this is definitely a way you can go peaceably take it from people, which is really nice. Because there's no way you could like buy a settlement any other way. Because this is a solid six million dollars right here. So there we go. Now we have two cities, which is just insane. And I can keep going to these people and asking them basically for their stuff. So I have a proposal. I'm going to take all your money. And I'm going to give you like, um, you know, one pole arm. And there we go. And then I'm going to go to this other person. I'm going to talk to them. I'm, I'd like to discuss something. I have a proposal. Take all their money. And you can just keep doing this over and over. If you can't find enough money in like cities and stuff like that. And you'll increase your relationship with each one of them every time you do this as well. Alright, so this guy has 58,000 gold. And I'm going to take all of his gold with literally one single javelin. 58,000 gold for the javelin. So this works just extremely well. Alright, so after talking to everyone in the party, I now have 523,000 gold. And two castles. So two giant cities that are going to be making me tons of money. And they both... Like, I, I also, buying that city, buying the two cities buys every soldier inside that city so i get 148 soldiers in there they're 256 militia which would take me forever to get as well as the other garrison force which happens to only be 90 and 200 guarding forces which is just insane as well as like the daily um money earned from it so i'm going to be earning about 1500 a day from the cities which will just grow over time which is a really nice little boost of money but that's just an insane way of getting money extremely quickly. And that is also... Like, we did all of this with just one person. I never had a single soldier. I never recruited a single person. I've never fought a single person. And I have two cities and half a million gold. And then another six million gold worth of crafting material and weapons. Which is just insane. This is, like, this is a way you can do a peaceful let's play of this game. And beat the entire game without fighting a single person. Just buying buying hordes and hordes of cities with just iron from javelins. Just crappy javelins with harpoon grips on the top. If you guys like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little series. Like, this took me a solid, I believe, 6 hours to get 500,000 gold. And then six million dollars worth of weapons and two giant cities without fighting a single person without recruiting a single person or anything so peaceful let's play so that's just an insane exploit in the game and i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next one and stay tuned for more